So we've got another email question from a subscriber, and this subscriber does not want to be named. Now their email reads, hello, Keith, when a person becomes a Christian, does that mean that they have to put off everything that they did when they were lost? What I'm trying to say is, can a Christian still enjoy music of the world because it sounds good? Is that okay? So thank you for your email question. So your question is, are we to put off everything that we did when we were lost, specifically the music we listened to? Well, if you are indeed a new creation in Christ as of today, that means all things have been made new. And that includes your nature. When you were lost, everything you embraced was secular. And this includes music in large, right? Now, if you're telling me that you still find it hard as a Christian to put off the music of the world, the question I would then ask you is, what about the music of the world still entices you? As a born again believer, what about the music of the world draws you in? Okay, see, I'm not telling you what you need to do. I'm telling you what you need to be. And if you are still embracing the music of the world, then it may be evident that you may not be born again. Now, I'll be honest, there is still music, certain R&B music that I listen to that was made by lost men and women. Okay, songs that speak about love, marriage and relationships. But these songs don't have cursing and they're not explicit by nature. But in your case, if you're telling me that you love secular hip hop, for example, let me show you a clip of why what you're embracing is dangerous. Hold on, let me explain something to them real quick. Before everybody starts screaming and saying, oh, like I told y'all earlier, you motherfuckers enter the rapture and if ain't nobody flying up to heaven right now obviously all y'all motherfuckers going to hell right with me so let's get it oh you already here i'm so sorry you can't get out you're stuck it's over you heard the song a million times and you didn't even know that's up but i still love you we have a few radio ministries represented here this may also um, be interesting particularly the kind typified by the current contemporary Christian music radio stations who admittedly offer programming that is very shallow but is yet good. Clean fun. I think it's a great movement. I heard this past week that John MacArthur was taken off of one of the major stations in America and replaced by Christian hip-hop music. It's a great trend, isn't it, John? <laughs> I heard, a, I heard a song the other day, I was, I was driving to the office, and uh, I was listening to one of these songs, and I counted the same phrase in one song 42 times. And I thought, what's wrong with this picture? <laughs> and another thing that, I, uh, that, that is, is missing in the modern music is there are no subtleties. There are no theological nuances. There, there are no um, inferences that those who are more deep in the things of God capture. Um, the, the, the richness is out. Everything seems to be across the surface. Uh, and, and the great hymns of the past were great poetry, but more than that, uh, they were great poetry that gripped uh, the depth of doctrinal truth in all of its richness and nuance and uh, that seems to be missing in in the sort of superficial kinds of things that we hear today just, just one other note I, I really do think um, your spiritual growth determines your response to that kind of thing I really have very little interest in listening to much of Christian music. It doesn't serve any purpose in my heart. It doesn't produce worship. It, it doesn't uh, thrill my soul. And some of it irritates me. A lot of it irritates me. It gets in the way of whatever they're trying to say. But I, I think that has a lot to do with how deeply you think about uh, truth, biblical truth. Can I put in a plug for the book? Or the, or the chapter or the article that Mark Dever mentioned earlier today by Carl Truman called What Can Miserable Christians Sing? And that article, which originally appeared in Themelios, is now a part of a collection of Carl's essays published by Christian Focus out of Scotland called The Wages of Spin. And uh, it's an excellent set of essays, by the way, but that article is in there. And it's very thought-provoking on this very subject that you're talking about. I have to say, though, uh, in addition to that, that music isn't bad just because it's new. I mean, there, there also has to be some really fine uh, compositions being made and created today, even as we speak. 
And remember the rich hymns of the church and the great choral music of the church at one time, uh, they were all new, they were contemporary. But one of the things that we love them so much is because they've stood the test of time. We see songs in the popular realm and the secular realm hit the top of the charts and meteoric rise. They last a few weeks and then they're gone. Uh, but th there's a, a test over time where uh, God gives his church great music. And, and that happened in the past too. I mean, Charles Wesley wrote 6,000 hymns. You know, and we sing several of his still today. Yeah, but we don't sing 6,000 of them. Exactly, that's right. Yeah. 